All right, so you guys saw a little while back where I was degreeing the camshaft on this to check for uh, to check the clearance between the piston and the valves, and also to uh, check the, the timing of it to make sure it was where it should be. Um, so yeah, we ran into the issue where the valves were way too close. Um, so I'm I'm starting the process right now. I think I got to figure it out in my head. I'm hoping it's going to work as as I planned. So uh, first off, I made this little tool. This is just three eighths uh, shaft, three eighths uh, rod rather. And uh, so I turned it down to the lathe to just about the right diameter, which is like 5.45 millimeters, just under five and a half, and and uh, put a little point on it. So I got this uh, piston right about top dead center. Uh, my closest clearance was five degrees before top dead center, so uh, top dead should be good enough. This fits pretty nice in there. Put it all the way in until it's touching the piston, then just give it a little hit. Do the same on the exhaust, and what that's going to do is it's going to leave a little mark, and then I'm going to know the center line for where my valves are going to be closest to the piston. So I took the head off, um, checked the marks, they look pretty good. Um, but what I did do is I'm running stainless steel valves. I installed the new valve, the old valves, I'm sorry, the original valves are in here now. Um, there's no retainers or springs or anything. And uh, what I'm doing now is I'm just pushing them in, spinning them a little bit to make a mark on the piston. I was going to try to use the drill to, to spin it and get a real good mark, but I uh, wasn't able to. I think that should be good enough. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that mark to to figure out the angle because the, the issue with these hemis is the heads, the valves come in at angles. So I need to figure out the angle and I need to figure out where the angle comes in at. It, it's a complicated process and I'm by no means a machinist. But uh, I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it, and hopefully it works. The head's back off. Um, I found the contact patches from where the valves were hitting, and I uh, just used a punch, um, punch the holes in. Um, you know, I'm looking at it now. I was thinking they came in at different angles um, than they do, but they, they look like they come in pretty straight this way. Um, as far as to the top and the bottom of the motor, they're pretty straight on. I thought they were kicked a lot higher up. Um, so, yeah, those marks you're going to, it's hard to explain, but more or less you're going to see where those come in uh, handy later on when I take the piston out and bring it over to the bridge port. We got the piston uh, jigged up in the rotary table right now on the bridge port. Um, hopefully it should be good enough. I'm not so sure about jigging it up, but I don't really have a, uh, like a piston vise or anything like that. So uh, before we do any cutting or anything, first thing first was I have to set the angle of the head here. And so the way I'm doing that is I'm trying to set it for the angle of the valve guides in the head. And the way I've done that is I use that tool that you guys saw that I, I made on the lathe um, just to get it parallel with this angle finder. Um, I don't know what the angle is, but it's not really important because I'm just going to use this tool to angle uh, the head to the same, to the same angle. So uh, and the intake and the exhaust uh, are the same angle, which is good. So I'm, I'm only going to have to set it once. So I'm going to take this, careful not to move it at all. And I haven't set this, it's just a total eyeball. And so yeah, you can see the angle is not really close yet. Uh, it's getting there. So right now I'm just going to tune, tune the head um, to match the angle. And then uh, we should be getting pretty close to doing some cutting. So I found the angle. Um, set the head to it. Uh, I, I did um, sweep the head to the piston before I change the angle to uh, try to make sure that that the table is square. Um, so I get the angle found and I just have a 1 16th inch drill bit which is uh, pretty much as good as I'm able to find the center of what's going to be the intake valve. You can see I have it marked with the I and the E. Um, so the next step is going to be to get the cutting tool out and um, set it up and wish for some good luck. So everything's ready to go here. Um, all you machinists that might be out there, you can go ahead and laugh at me now because I have a boring head with a boring bar that I'm going to attempt to do a plunge cut on uh, this piston with. Um, no idea what to expect. All I know is I used the shortest boring bar I had to get as much rigidity as I can. I also ground it to have a square edge, so it, it should cut a, a flat smooth, uh, the bottom of it should be a flat smooth cut. It's set right now, I have my radius set, everything should be centered, uh, ready to go. I'm going to have to go 90 thousandths down on this intake, so 
It's going to be taking some material. We'll see if this is going to be rigid enough to handle it. I'm just barely pushing down because I mean I'm using the the quill feed by hand like it's a drill press over here so we'll see I'll be amazed right now I'm at uh I'm coming up on 40 thousandths cut but I'm putting all my faith in a Harbor Freight uh, welding magnet there so I don't know so the intake cut is done for the intake valve it took 95 thousandths off um, it's looking pretty pretty darn good. I'm surprised by how clean the cut came out. It just went real, real slow. Um, what I forgot to mention when I was setting up the intake was that I have the uh, the one hole here that I that I uh, punched in with that tool. Uh, it's obviously to, for the center line of where the valve is going to be. But the outside one, I kind of didn't mention uh, the significance of that. And the significance of that one is that it's where the deepest part of the cut has to be. Um, so what I have to do is just set them both up on the x-axis so they are directly in line so when I move this left to right it's still in the center and the center on both holes uh, I'm just kinda eyeballing it uh, I think I'm getting probably within like five thousandths maybe not but uh, that's why it's on the rotary table so that if the one hole is behind the other or in front of the other I can just rotate a little bit and then you know uh, just move my x and y axis to get them where I need to be well, the piston's looking pretty good. Um, just took it out of the mill, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the results. Let's see how it comes out on the camera. It's looking all right. I'll post a picture of it so you guys can check it out right now. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, so I'm pretty happy with it. Um, the only thing left I have to do is um, figure out, try to get an idea of the volume of material I took out for these reliefs. It's probably not going to be that much, but what I did do was I knew my amounts I had to take out to get the clearance for the cam, and I took an additional 20 thousandths, anticipating um, up to two cc's removed, which it's not two cc's, but I wanted to just cover myself with an additional 20 thousandths so that I can then uh, plane this head down uh, up to an additional 20 thousandths and still um, maintain the clearance I need. Uh, on these motors I figured 10, um, 10 thousandths of an inch is about a cc, um, so I'm not going to get anywhere near there. Uh, I just have some putty, some plumber's putty actually. I'm going uh, to try, I'm going to attempt to fill it in and you know roll it up into a ball and do a displacement test on it and see what kind of, um, what kind of volume we get. Uh, just, you know, for those of you who may not know or build too many engines, not that I'm a professional at it at all, this is just a hobby for me. Um, these are the results that can happen if you don't clearance everything and if your um, valves start hitting the piston. Now this motor, this was not a performance motor. This was just a lawnmower uh, motor. I believe the guy ran it out of oil, but the results are going to be the same. That piston, I'm not um, that valve, I'm not sure if that's the intake or the exhaust, that is in there. That That's not coming out. So. Um, these are the things that can happen when you don't have the clearance that you need. Both of the reliefs are filled in with some putty. Um, this is going to be a lot smaller than I thought. I, I may not even take anything off the head. But uh, So I'm going to peel these out. Both of them. Make sure you get everything. Clean it right out. And all I have is this little... All I have is that. I mean, it, this is kind of not even worth doing a test on, but... Um, We'll see what it reads. All right, so the breadth's filled up. Uh, I just put about 10 cc's in the bottom just so I have an even number. Right now it's 90. The number's on 90 cc's, but you know, there's only 10 in there. So I got my little, uh, I got the little rolled up ball. I'm gonna dump it in there and see what we got. So it bumped it up a little bit, but um, especially like I, I just filled this and you need to give it a minute or two for all of the alcohol that might be on the side to, to work its way down. You may not be able to see it, but there probably is some alcohol from where I splashed it that's still dripping down and is actually going to raise my number up. Um, 
So right now I'm at half a cc and I'll give it a little more and, and see if that number goes up anymore or if that's going to be my final measurement. Alright, so all the alcohol uh, finally came down off the walls of the barrette and um, settled and I'm about 0.6 cc's. Uh, that's how big the, the ball of putty was. So uh, I figure I'm just going to take off about skim seven thousandths off of the head and um, that'll keep me right between 10.4 to 10.5 to 1 compression ratio. So finally uh, all set, ready to take off the material I need to to keep the compression ratio and hopefully that'll be the last machining I'll have to do for this motor and I can finally just put it together. So the head's taken down about six thousandths. I'll just finish it up with some sandpaper, you know, on the flat surface like uh, you guys saw us do a little while ago. And um, that's about it. I just got to clean everything up real, real good. Everything's got, uh, you know, metal chips all over it. So clean everything real thoroughly and hopefully I can assemble the motor and it'll be the last time assembling it. I thought it was going to be the last time, the last time, but um, ran into some clearance issues. So put it all together and I'll show you uh, in a later video what kind of clearance I get when I when I do check it uh, again like I did before. So anyways, that's another video. Uh, catch you next time with the Janik Journal. Go ahead, leave me comments. Uh, let me know if you, know, you guys saw something I could have done better. I'm no machinist at all and uh, everything is a learning experience for me. So um, if you guys have any tips or anything like that, that'd be uh, much appreciated. So catch you guys next time.